All right, Shalom, 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 Yashallah. First and foremost, giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders of Yashallah. All praise to the Most High Yahweh by Hashem Mashiach Yahweh Shai for blessing our elders with the spirit of truth so that we may know. Shout out to the Akium and the Akwathium that's keeping the faith and the works. Y'all keep it up. It's your brother Abaya coming at you with more precepts. All right. Um, we almost out, man. We almost out. Babylon the Great has fallen. It's fallen. All right. The finances is crumbling. The state of the, the state of America is worse than it's ever been. Um, you know, outside of um antiquity. Right, or an, what is it, antebellum? Right, outside of the old America when we first got off them slave ships. Right, um, but we almost out. Right, so I'm gonna bring out a couple precepts to show how close we are. Right, because we're extremely close. The Most High been dealing with us, man, and He been. Waking us up to the facts. All right, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 68. It says, And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again, specifically with ships. All right? That word Egypt, according to the Bible, is bondage. Another word for bondage is slavery. In fact, let's get that. This is the book of Exodus. Chapter 20 and verse 2. It says, I am Yahweh thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Egypt is bondage. Bondage is slavery. All right? Now, I know I ain't telling people, that everybody in the truth, I know this ain't nothing you ain't never heard before. As a matter of fact, this is what's being broken down right now is what opened up the majority of our eyes to see that these scripts are talking about us. All right. But just follow me. All right. Come with me. All right. So Deuteronomy 28, 60 says, And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt, which is slavery, again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies, your enemies, your enemies, for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. No man shall buy you. All right? We've been dreaming of freedom for so long, man. A lot of us even think we're free right now. We've been wanting it so bad. All right? We've been wanting it so bad, we really do believe that in 2000, so-called 2020 in America, in the land where we own no land, and if some of us do own property, we paying taxes on that property. We own literally nothing. Whatever little bit we have is just that, a little bit. Right? Even the millionaires and billionaires of our people, it ain't a lot of us. Right? We eating crumbs, man. Right? They said, no man shall buy you. There's been a lot of people that have stepped up to the plate since we've been over here and have attempted to overthrow this system. Right? Either by, by gunplay, by militancy, or by the judicial system. Either way it goes, man, nothing has worked. And that's why it hasn't worked. Because scripture just said, no man shall buy you. Meaning, no person on this planet is going to get you out of this captive state. Alright? But, we have a power that exists. That's his name, literally. He exists. Yahawa. And he real. Right? So we had to go through what we what we've been going through 
since we've been in the West. And it's all to show the Most High's power when he gets us out of this place. Right? So this is the book of Isaiah chapter 52, verse 3. It says, For thus saith Yahweh, Ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Every time we do what we want to do instead of what the Most High tells us to do, we're selling ourselves. And those of us that are in higher places, they have literally sold themselves. They, they sold their soul in order to get to them places. Meaning they don't care nothing about what's theirs. They can care less about their heritage according to the Bible. They can care less about their people. Like literally direct and indirect. Right? The people that the people uh, that's in the neighborhoods that you come from, man, your direct people, like your close close relatives. It's called blood sacrifice. Alright? But the most high said He's going to redeem us without money. It's going to be a miraculous act that's going to get us out of this place. All right. Verse four. For thus said Yahweh power, my people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there and the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. It says now, therefore, what have I here? Saith Yahweh. That my people is taken away for naught. They that rule over them make them to howl, saith Yahweh. And my name continually, every day, is blasphemed. Alright? So this is an everyday thing. This is an everyday thing, man, through their Christianity. Right? Through they um God bless America. Right? Through they uh, claiming to be Christians, but you know, acting like tyrants. Right, and we've been howling since we've been here. More so now. Now that Assyrian that oppress us without cause—that's not literally talking about Assyrian. That's just talking about the oppressors. Right, we've been oppressed since we've been here without cause. They have no reason to not tell us the truth. They have no reason to not tell us the truth about us, about history. Outside of them maintaining their white supremacy. Right. So verse six says, therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. Right. And a lot of us are waking up to that fact. We waking up to it before all hell break loose, before the day of the most high. Because in that day, every knee shall bow. Everybody going to know it. There ain't going to be no mystery then. It's going to be a well-known fact that Yahweh exists. All right? So we're trying to get it in early, man, so that we don't have to partake of that second death, which is that fire. All right? But the Most High said he going to redeem us without money. So it's steps to that redemption. All right? Let's get to one of those major steps. Matthew 24, verse 14. The book of Matthew 24 and verse 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Christianity has been a global powerhouse for hundreds of years. Right? For a long time, man. A long time. And ain't nothing been happening on this earth like it is now. Christianity been around for a long time. Islam been around for a long time. The events that's going on today, hey, they bear witness that both of those religions are false. Because this just said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And it's looking like we're at that time now. So, 
as it pertains to the things that's going on on this earth today that um, people that are not in the know are totally confounded by. They have no idea of what's going on. A lot of people want to blame um, Trump. They want to blame, uh, I mean, his administration, the government, uh, 2020. Uh, a lot of people just have no idea of what's going on. Right? But those of us that's in the truth, hey, we know what's going on. We know exactly what's going on. Matter of fact, let me show you what's going on. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, and verse 9. It says, Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith Yahweh Power, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. All right? It says, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up, stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. All right? An exceeding great army. All right? So that breath that's being spoken of is wisdom. Wisdom, according to the scriptures, is keeping the commandments. It's that same breath of life that the Most High breathed into our forefather Adam. All right? It is not talking about a mystical mist that hit the earth, went into the dirt, and then formed the body and brought it up. No. Speaking about the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Alright, so let me see. Let's get that. Just to prove this point right quick. Let me see. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, um, 24. Alright. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 24, it says, For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. All right? By reason of her pureness. It says, For she is the breath of the power of powers. Or, yeah. For she is the breath of the power of God and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no undefiled thing fall into her. Right? Wisdom is the breath of the power of God. What is wisdom? Go to the book of Sirach, chapter 19, verse 20. It says, the fear of Yahweh is all wisdom, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law and the knowledge of his omnipotency. The law is wisdom. The law is the knowledge of his omnipotency. How else will you know your father, your father, your power? Lest ye read his words. His words are law. Simple, man. We make it complicated. Right? So, back to the point. The book of Ezekiel. Chapter 37, or back to where I was, rather. Um, so, where's I? 11. Mm. Yeah, 10. So, I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. Them laws came back because the Most High sent the prophets back out to his people. 
to wake us up out of our sleep, to let us know that we are about to be redeemed, to let us know that the fall of this kingdom is at hand, to let us know who we are. Right. It says, slow. It says, and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. It says, then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Like we did it to ourselves, like we just read, right? We sold ourselves for naught, but we will be redeemed without money, right? And since we've been in this down state, man, it's been a hopeless ride. A lot of us stop believing in God altogether because of the lack of hope, because of the situations that we that we wake up to every day. All right? Verse 12, it says, Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh Power, Behold, O my people, I will open up your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it and performed it, saith Yahweh. Right? So the Most High pulled us out of the graves, man. He pulled us out of death. He pulled us out of sin by letting us know that we in sin. That's how. That's even how you know you have to go to the law in order to understand that you in sin. So if you don't if you don't know the law, and you don't know that you're in sin, that means literally you're in the grave, meaning you're dead. Right? You literally are dead, the walking dead. Right? I believe that's Proverbs twenty one sixteen. I could be wrong. Right? So. The Most High unleashed the prophets back on the earth and let us know, hey, we almost out. Some of us uh, heard, some of us forbear. Right? So, that ain't nothing new. Scripture saying no new thing under the sun. So, let's get that. This is the book of Proverbs, I mean, Jeremiah, so like, Jeremiah chapter 28 and uh, verse 8. It says, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Right? So it ain't nothing new that the Most High sins. Uh, prophets out before destruction, before war, before evil, before anything. He going to send the prophets out and warn the people. All right, verse 9, it says, The prophet which prophesieth of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that Yahweh hath truly sent him. All right? And the prophecy, the prophecy of these, these this wicked kingdom falling has been placed out on this earth for quite some time. And now it seems like we're reaching the pinnacle of the fall. All right. We've been seeing the fall. We just have we just haven't recognized it because a lot of us went in the truth. We had to come into the truth first. And the most I had to open up our eyes and open up our ears to hear and see fully. For us to understand that this place is in the fallen, a fallen estate, and the kingdom to come is being built before our eyes, right? So, like I said, I mean, people don't understand what's going on, but those of us in the truth, man, we know. We fully aware of what's going on, All right? Um. Uh, 
you. Let, hey, let matter of fact, let's get into what, get more into rather, as to what's going on. All right, I bring this point out quite often when I go out and speak. The more of us that wake up on a day-to-day -day basis, the more trouble happens on this earth. And it's because the more of us that wake up, the more Yahweh turns to us and fights on our behalf. The world won't understand it because darkness can't understand light. Darkness has no idea why light operates how it does, but that don't stop light from operating. Right? So this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, and verse 19. It says, Therefore, thus saith Yahweh, if thou return, then will I bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vial, thou shalt be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee, but return not thou unto them. Right? So, the Most High is putting prophecies in the prophet's mouths. And we going out and we speaking. Right? Most High willing, I'm counting in that number. Right? So, we have to move further and further away from this world. And in our moving further, fur further and further away, right, um, the people that hear the word the same way you heard the word, they follow you or whoever in, in the truth. And, and they leave the world further and further until that time up. Right. Verse 20, it says, and I will make thee unto this people a fenced brazen wall. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith Yahweh. Right? When we go out and do what we do, man, they book so hard. Right? When I tell you we've had pistols, assault rifles pulled out on us. When I tell you we've been threatened with physical violence. For preaching the word. All for preaching the gospel, man. For opening up the Bible. Going out to the highways and byways. And prophesying against this kingdom. And prophesying uh, uh, about the judgments of uh, the two thirds. And all the rest of these wicked nations. All right. When I tell you violence comes with the job, and hey, they go hand in hand. But it's all good because we understand the purpose. So we can care less about what the events. We can care less about it, man. If you're going to do something, go ahead and do it. We understand what happened to us when we die. You don't. Right? We feel none but the most high. All right? Straight like that. All right, verse 20 again. Jeremiah 15 to 20, it says, And I will make thee unto this people the fenced brazen wall, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith Yahweh. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. The Most High got us, man. And his hand is moving on our behalf. He moving us right now. This place is done. When I tell you Babylon done, bro, daughter Babylon is done. Done, da, da. It's done, man. All right. Let's see. And it's well overdue. It's well overdue, man. I bring this point out all the time, man. Think of all of the prayers that got sent up to our father, man, on them slave ships, in the cotton fields, in Massa House. All right. Think of all them prayers that went up, man. While we were strapped to them poles getting whipped. All them prayers that got sent up when we had nooses around our necks getting home. All them prayers that got shot up when we was pulled over by the police in the middle of the street with guns drawn on us. All them prayers getting sent up. 
all them prayers getting sent up, man. All these, all these years. By righteous and unrighteous, man. And now the most high starting to move, man, because we're waking up to self. Something we we haven't done since we've been in this West. We haven't done it, man. This this is the only the only this is the only thing we have not tried. And now that we now that we're trying it, things are happening. Hey man, one plus one, always two. Right? So start back up. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter eleven and verse sixteen. It says, Therefore say, therefore say, Salah. Thus saith Yahweh Power, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. The Most High has definitely been my peace in this West. The minute I found out about them, for real, and, and, and the only time I found out about the Most High is when I got out the church. And that's crazy. The church, well, the pastor's job is to read the scripts and tell the people what thus says the Most High is, or says, what it means. Put the precepts together. Right? It ain't just to make us feel good, man. It's to really change. That's how you know Christianity and everybody involved with it, man, ain't about that for real. Because how you got a church in every hood, damn near on every corner, but the hood still the hood. Ain't no change. Ain't no change, man. You you steadily promising, you know, talking about if you pay this, then you're going to get blessed that, and if you do this, you're going to get blessed that, but don't nothing happen. That's why people tired of it, man. Why people fed up with it, man. I know I was. And like I said, that's why I left. And when I left, I found out the truth. And I've been more, I've been closer to my power now than I've been in my whole life, man. My whole life. All praise to the most high Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shah for waking me up to this truth, man. For real. It's a blessing and an honor. Straight like that. All right, so verse 17, it says, Therefore say, thus says Yahweh Power, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Yahshua Allah. It says, And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof, and all the abominations thereof from thence. So those of us that are in the truth, man, we already trying to get a head start on it, man. All right? We done cut cut pork all together, shrimp, crab, lobster, shrimp. Uh, well, I already said that catfish. Anything that's unlawful, man, we putting it away because it ain't that deep. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth my salvation, man. And our salvation is around the corner. The Most High is destroying Babylon. And I tell you, all the countries that uh, is a that are associated with Babylon, can't stand Babylon, ain't dealing with Babylon no more. They not dealing with this place no more, man. You can't leave America right now, man. Your passport is not effective at all. You cannot go. It ain't gonna do nothing but get worse, man. It ain't gonna do nothing but get worse. All right, verse 19, it says, And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them an heart of flesh. The Most High going to take that stubbornness away from us, man. We ain't, it ain't going to be no... When we, when, we, when we do get saved, right, when we really get saved, Ain't gonna be thing. Ain't gonna be no more picking up the book to read this or that, man. We gonna know it. It's gonna be in us. Ain't gonna be no more. Hey, brother, you know, you know who you are according to the scripture. Hey, sister, you know who you are according to the. Scripture. Ain't gonna be no more of it. It's gonna be a well known fact. 
right? Verse 20, it says that they may walk in my statutes and keep mine ordinances and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their power. Straight like that. All right? But the Most High also, hey, he got something to say to them two-thirds too, because it go hand in hand. It says, but as for them whose heart walketh after their shalom, but as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, said Yahweh Power. Most High says, since you don't want to do what he said to do, bet that very thing that you love is going to destroy you. That very thing you choosing over the Father is going to be your destruction, man. Straight like that. You can't say I ain't know. You can't say I've never heard this because this gospel is being preached all over the world. All right? This place is falling, man. It's falling. You see it. You just can't believe it. You see it. You see this place falling, man. You got to protest every week. Riot break out every other week, man. People are literally not paying no attention to authority, bro. Famine on the way. The dollar is finna be completely wiped out and they finna go digital. That's the mark of the beast, man. This place done, man. This place done, man. Literally, bro. The mark of the beast has been introduced, man. Literally. And all of this is in this very book that a lot of our people say ain't real. A lot of our people say the white man wrote the book, but everybody in the book, so-called black, if you read the book. When I say everybody, I'm talking about everyone of importance. Righteously. So-called black. If a white man wrote this book, if I was a white man and I wrote this book, there would be no mention of black anything in a positive light. Song of Solomon 1 and, one and 5 would not exist. Revelation 1 14 would not exist. Job 30 and 30 would not exist. So forth and so on. It wouldn't be in there. But guess what? It is. All right. So, this is the book of Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 20. It says, At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith Yahweh. And that's what's going on. The Most High is moving things on our behalf because we're turning to him. We're calling on our Father. We're keeping these high holy days, man. We're keeping these law, statutes, and commandments. Most, most importantly, we got the faith. We got the faith, man. We know it's real. We going up against all kind of demons and wicked ass individuals, man, in defense of the truth. All right? And the most I said he going to make us a name and a praise among all people of the earth, man. It's going down, man. Babylon is falling, man. And the Most High going to make sure you know he did it. All right? This is the book of Salah. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, and verse 14. It says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that it shall no more be said, Yahweh liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Right? It's still being said that right now today. 
right? Go down more, just tell, tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. That's how everybody knows God being introduced to his people. Well, if, if a person don't know nothing else about the Bible outside of so-called Jesus Christ, they know about Egypt and Pharaoh. Let my people go. But this just said, when that day come, ain't nobody going to be speaking on the most high that brought Israel out of Egypt. That ain't going to be in their head no more. So let's see what's going to be in their head. Verse 15 says, but Yahweh liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. The land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. Why is the land of the north separated from and all the lands whether he had driven them. It's because the land of the north is where they were going to be or persecuted the hardest. It's not North America where we have been put to the test. We still here, but we get treated the worst in this place, man. That's prophecy, man. This place done, man. Babylon done. It's a wrap. Any day now, man, they could go down. Literally. World War Three, Crash of the dollar. Famine. Pestilences. Diseases, man. Nation against nation. Kingdom against kingdom, man. All of this is what we living in today, man. All right. So, the most high gonna redeem us, man. Without money. Bump your dollar. Let it crash. Let it burn. Just like Babylon, man. Hey, all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh. By Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai, Most High Willing. Uh, this video was edifying. And uh, Shalom.